This is an introduction to the audio-described version of The Telephone, a Scottish opera film commissioned by Edinburgh International Festival. This new digital adaptation takes Giancarlo Menotti's one-act romantic comedy from 1947 and relocates its mismatched lovers to the Edinburgh of today. The film is directed by Daisy Evans and features two singers, as well as a chamber ensemble made up of musicians from the Orchestra of Scottish Opera, conducted by music director Stuart Stratford. The Telephone has been created as part of Edinburgh International Festival's My Light Shines On project, a series of video works and light installations across Scotland's capital to mark the beginning of the festival season and celebrate the enduring spirit of the festival city. A short synopsis. Lucy and Ben are two young lovers, squeezing in time for a swift drink before Ben must dash for his train. He's about to pop the most important question in his life, but can he compete with the relentless demands of Lucy's mobile phone? Daisy Evans' production asks if the telephone is an indispensable 21st century communication device or the bane of real-world relationships. In addition to the phone calls that make up such a big part of this piece, both conventional voice calls and video calls, messages are exchanged, as well as communication on social media, these texts, posts and comments appear on screen as the characters interact with them. The film takes place in and around the King's Theatre on a sunny day in Edinburgh. Most of the action unfolds in a plush upstairs bar, with bar stools and heavy curtains at the windows. The role of Lucy is sung by Soraya Maffey. Lucy has wavy brown hair and wears a long, flowing button-up dress with short sleeves and featuring an abstract pattern in green, blue and cream. She has a necklace with a small gold pendant. When we first meet her, she's wearing a pink overcoat and pink trainers, which she soon swaps for cream-coloured court shoes. She also has a pink leather handbag and a cotton tote bag, and sometimes uses headphones with her smartphone. Lucy's partner Ben is sung by Jonathan McGovern. Ben is taller than Lucy, with a shadow of stubble, and his floppy brown hair worn slicked back. He wears a blue shirt over a white t-shirt, along with a green jacket, dark jeans and casual shoes. A bartender is played by Hannah Birkin. She wears an apron over a white t-shirt and has short blonde hair. Now, with the film about to begin, we move to the present-day Edinburgh setting of The Telephone, just as Lucy arrives outside the King's Theatre, her phone in her hand. Scottish Opera A Scottish Opera film commissioned by Edinburgh International Festival Messaging style lettering The Telephone, Giancarlo Menotti Arriving outside the theatre, Lucy messages Ben King's Theatre, right? Ben sends a thumbs up emoji Circle bar, nice and quiet Lucy replies, I'm here, shall I head up? Yep, I'm almost there She goes through double doors to the theatre foyer and makes her way to the bar, which is otherwise deserted. Lucy takes out her headphones and places her phone on the bar. The blonde-haired bartender comes over and smiles as she prepares a drink for Lucy. Lucy pops her pink trainers in her tote bag and takes off her coat before sitting on a bar stool. The woman fills a wine glass with fizz. Lucy smiles, slipping on her cream-coloured court shoes. She takes the headphones out from her phone and glances towards the door before messaging Ben. Where are you? I'm waiting. An emoji of clinking glasses. Ben says, 30 secs. The bartender adds a measure of bright red Aperol to Lucy's glass, then tops it off with ice and a slice. On Instagram, Lucy hearts a couple's engagement post, then comments, Congrats guys, engaged at last. Lucy smiles as she's handed her cocktail. She goes to take a sip, but pauses to take a selfie posing with the glass. She sets the drink aside and posts the picture on Instagram with the caption Waiting for Ben, anniversary today, hashtag four years, hashtag bay, hashtag love you.
Ben arrives outside carrying a couple of bags and a bunch of flowers. A calendar reminder on his phone says, train to London departs 1850. Then a text from colleague Alex, good luck mate, engagement ring emoji. Ben joins Lucy in the bar and they share a big hug, smiling broadly. He presents her with the flowers, pink roses. As Ben orders a drink, Lucy returns to her stool, beaming. Thank you. I'm so glad you like them. She photographs the bouquet. Now, Lucy, I've something to tell you. I'm going away. Oh, yes. When are you going? My train leaves in an hour. Yes, I'm so sorry. But before I go, I would like to ask you something. Yes, dear. Lucy sips her drink. You know how much I've always liked you. Yes, dear. Well then, I was just wondering, and that is of course after I come back, if you would consider... What, dear? I don't quite know how to tell you. As Ben reaches for his pocket, Lucy gets a video call. Excuse me. Hello, hello. Oh, Margaret, it's you. I am so glad you called. I was just thinking of you. It's been a long time since you called me. Ben leans over and gives Margaret a wave. I wish I could be there. I'm afraid I must not. Hello, hello. What did you say, my darling? What Lucy's did lost you connection. Say? Hello, hello. Please speak loud. I saw the funniest thing. Jane and Paul are going to get married next July. Don't you think that is the funniest thing you ever heard? I know. <laughs> of course. At the bar, Ben drinks a bottle of beer and looks around as he waits. And how are you? And how is John? And how is Jean? You must have heard what I said. Ben checks his phone. It says, train to London in 49 minutes. Ben tries to get Lucy's attention. Standing by the window, Lucy gestures to Ben with her drink. Smiling, he orders bar snacks. <laughs> she scurries back over to her stool. She gives Ben a knowing smile. Ben gives a little wave, but Lucy's drawn back in. Margaret's been joined by a guy. Still, Ben waits.
Lucy shows the dog to Ben. Yes, Margaret. Ben watches, amused. Lucy waves goodbye, then unplugs her headphones. That was Margaret. You don't say. Isn't she funny? She is a scream. Would you like to know what she told me? I'd love to, but not now. It's getting late, and there's so much I have to tell you. All right, go on. Ben takes a breath. What is it, darling? A phone call. Excuse me. Hello. Hello. What are you saying? Oh, what number do you want? Oh, it's spam. Hang up. Don't, don't. End it. Wrong number. Lucy ends the call. Why must they always pick on me when they get the wrong number? Why, indeed. But now will you please listen to me? The time is getting short. Would you like to know the exact time? Just wait. Excitedly, Lucy does a web search. She types what is, and suggestions come up. What is IP, love, a Karen, the weather today, opera Syria, all-purpose flower. She shows the suggestions to Ben. She continues, what is the exact moment of conception, value of pi? She writes, what is the exact time in India, in the UK, of the summer solstice? She looks up, what is the exact time in Edinburgh? The bartender. Ben considers, but shakes his head and the bartender retreats. Smugly, Lucy shows Ben her phone. Thank you. But now, please, will you listen to me? Of course, what else have I done? Go on, then. Well, as we were saying, you know how much I've always cared for you. So, I was just wondering, that is, of course, after I come back, if you would consider... He stands. Oh! I'm sorry. Hello, hello. Why, George, it's you. But I was just playing with this song. What do you mean? Whoever told it to you, I know it doesn't matter about you. If you don't believe me, you can't call the fence. How oh, dare you say such a thing? Stop using such language. No, yes, no, no, I mean, I saw it. How can you believe that I'd say such a thing? Now listen to me, I'm not going to stand it if you believe it! Hello? Hello? Bugger! Her phone's dead. Listen, Lucy, listen now. Don't you cry, don't you cry. There is something I must tell you. Listen, Lucy. Lucy takes a charger from her bag and gets the bartender to plug it in. Lift your face and dry your tears beside Lucy. Ben holds her. Don't you cry, don't you cry. You don't understand. Let me go and get a handkerchief. Lucy leaves the bar. Ben stares after her. Ben leans against the bar. Try again and again. What else can a man do? Except wait and then try and wait and then try once again. I'd rather contend with love, a husband, or in law. 
shores than this two-headed monster who comes unasked and devours my day. For this thing can't be challenged, can't be poisoned or drowned. It has hundreds of lives and miles of umbilical cord. As Ben glares at Lucy's phone, something occurs to him. He glances towards the door before picking up her phone. A message is displayed on screen. Ben keys in a four-digit passcode, but it doesn't work. His eyes dart towards the bartender, then he tries to unlock the phone again. The next attempt disables the phone just as Lucy gets back. You wicked man! What were you doing to it? I... I was only trying... The poor thing! Shame on you! Put it down! I assure you it was all in self-defence! You must have hit it first. Lucy... Can we two have a quiet talk? Yes, dear, but first I must call a pal. Pamela, why must you call her now? I must tell her of my quarrel with George. Can't you tell her afterwards? Oh, no, I must get hold of her before she hears it from somebody else. It would all be to the Lord. I will make I it very short. Lucy clasps her phone to her chest. Now, I shall sneak on. Can't you wait until I go? But I have no time to lose. All right, but please hurry. Looking fed up, Ben turns back to the bar and swigs from his beer bottle. Ben sighs. Lucy stands apart, her phone at her ear. She fidgets with her necklace. Ben, this is Lucy. I just had a quarrel with George. She fetches her own drink. Over the telephone, shall I tell you all about it? A glance to Ben. It all began on a Sunday when Jean and I went skating. We got on the trolley and met Meg and Molly, so we sat down next to them. I thought both Meg and Molly for years and thought they were. started asking if I had seen George, and now I know why. I said I had seen him once, that's all they wanted to know. So one thing led to another, and while we gabbed about George, I told them what you told. Ben gets messages from his colleague Alex. Mate, did you do it yet? Want beer for the train? Ben gives Alex a call. I 
can't say such a thing. You know that in me you have a true friend. But he wouldn't believe me and cursed me up and down and kept calling me names. Yes, all sorts of names. And then I said, Oh, George, my darling, Ben gets a napkin and a pen from the bartender and leaves a note. I've waited hour after hour, but she will never stop. I must tell her I love her, but that thing was letting her know. I have to go, and she will never stop, and she will never I heard that before. She only starts to start again. If I stay, I'll go mad. There's only one thing left. There's only one thing Lucy turns round and sees that Ben's left the bar. Oh, where has he gone? He left me alone with my telephone. I wonder what he wanted to tell me. She stands at the bar, not noticing the napkin. She sees the napkin which says, Love you, Lucy, heart, kiss, kiss, kiss. Will he come back? She grabs her bag, then glances at her phone. By now he must be on the train. Looking put out, Lucy hops back onto her stool and winds up her headphones before putting them in her bag. She gazes at Ben's note. I don't know why, I feel depressed. She folds it and puts it in her bag. Look, it's here. Look, it's here. She jumps to her feet and knocks back her drink before answering the call. She goes to the window, Ben's phoning from across the road. Did you miss your train? Not yet. But why did you leave me? And what was the thing you so wanted to tell? He gets down on one knee. Will you marry me? She gathers her things. Not just yet. I'll miss my train. You still have time. She leaves her charger behind. Will you wait for me? Lucy hurries downstairs to meet Ben at the main entrance. Then 
every day. In golden sunlight, they walk off arm in arm. Ben kneels. You'd better write it down so you won't forget it. Double O two. Double O two. Three. Ben slips a ring on Lucy's finger. Their phone backgrounds side by side form an image of the couple kissing. A Scottish opera film commissioned by Edinburgh International Festival, filmed at the King's Theatre Edinburgh in July 2020 under appropriate social distancing regulations. With thanks to all of Scottish Opera's supporters. Scottish Government, gov.scot. Commissioned by Edinburgh International Festival. The City of Edinburgh Council, Creative Scotland. Scottish Opera, 